Alright, so in the previous video, we ended up setting up some basic weapon sway. So as we look left and right, up and down, as you can see the weapon kind of follows. Now, I was kind of aiming for an Escape from Tarkov style, and it occurred to me, as I look left, the weapon points a little bit left, as I look right, it looks right, and same thing with up and down. Now, I'm not a huge fan of that, I kind of want to go in the opposite direction. So when we turn left, for example, the muzzle drags to the right, as if it's got some weight not as if the weapon is controlling us, as it kind of seems now. That's what I want to reverse. Also, you can ignore the uh, front sight on the end of the gun. That was just put there by me to tinker with. So, what we're going to do is in our rotate with rotation function, we want to invert a couple things. So, for example, the roll is technically acting as our pitch. It's not actually our roll. So, what we're going to do is we just want to act go through and invert it. So, currently, we're multiplying by 1. Let's undo that multiplier and I have disabled live coding so let me re-enable it real quick and compile okay so now when we look up as you can see it is kind of it's like it's dragging so it has some weight to it we look up the muzzle points down we look down the muzzle points up it gives it that little bit of kind of a uh, some lag so to speak I don't know what the actual word would be and now we want to do the same thing for left and right so that's going to be our y'all. However, we will run into some issues when we actually go through and do this. So for example, if I just simply invert it, let me multiply it by negative one, and we turn, as you can see, the yaw is completely gone. And that's really not what we want. We want to have it do the exact same type of sway, but just in the opposite direction. So it's got some weight to it. Feels like it's heavy. So what we can do, let me close that, is we can have another rotator and kind of go between the two. So what I mean by that is if I show you the result, and we can see here with the result, if we look left, the weapon drags in the opposite direction. So I turn left, the muzzle drags to the right, I turn right, the muzzle drags to the left. Now that has to be done with two separate rotators. If we do it with just one, we're going to end up with the result like shown in the other project. So if we take a look at what was done, so what's going on is we have two rotators. One I have here called unmodified, and this one is essentially just being set kind of to, well, it's the new rotation to be set to, so to speak. Well, the, let me rephrase that. The transform, because we are modifying the location as well. Actually, are we doing that in this? No, we are doing just the rotation, so it's just going to be just a rotator. And then as we go down, you can kind of see here, we then have our actual rotator that we go through and use that we modify. So we're kind of interpolating the unmodified one. And then based upon the returned results, we go through and modify the one we are actually using. So that way our interpolation is not screwing with it like it is in this section here. So we're going to go ahead and make another rotator. So wherever we have it, right here. This one's just going to be F rotator. Let's do, I'll do the same naming. Unmodified rotator. Or unmodified turn rotator. We're going to set the unmodified turn rotator. Unmodified turn rotator. And then after that, we set turn rotation to equal the unmodified turn rotator. And then after that, we go through and we modify the results all the same. Okay, scratch that. We are actually doing location. I just completely overlooked that. So let's go ahead and give that a quick try. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure that's still set. We are good to go. Let's see what it looks like. So we turn left and we have lag in the opposite direction. Same thing we look up and we look down and we have the same result. It is lagging as if the weapon has some weight. So one thing I noticed, I don't know if you can kind of see it left and right, it only does horizontal, but up and down, you can see it's got some roll to it. So we can zero out that roll by setting our pitch to zero. So what we're going to do is turn rotation dot pitch equals zero and then do our live coding. And now when we look up and down, that roll is completely gone. 
So the pitch does not correspond to our roll. Or sorry, the roll does not correspond. <sighs> getting backwards. The pitch corresponds to our roll, and the roll corresponds to our pitch. So it's a little bit backwards due to how the system is set up. But as long as you can wrap your head around it, it's pretty straightforward. So now what I want to do real quickly is turn this into a transform. So we're going to just convert it to a transform real quick. So remove turn rotation, turn location, and just have an F transform. Let's call it turning sway transform. And this is where we're going to be setting everything in. So we'll have all kind of the same mumbo jumbo here. Except we'll do turning sway transform. Well, actually better yet, let's construct the rotator first. So F rotator. That goes through and sets that. And F vector. And let's go ahead and set turn location dot X to equal that. And then we'll just set the turning sway transform dot set location to equal turn location. And same thing for the rotation. So turning sway transform dot set rotation. We're going to set it to turn rotation dot quaternion and we are good to go. So then we can just replace this with a simple transform so that way we don't have two separate nodes, one for location, one for rotation. We can keep it kind of all contained. All right, once that's compiled, let's load up the animation blueprint again. And here we have our setup. So let's search for turn, what was it? Turn, I cannot remember. Turning sway transform. We can go ahead and split it and link in our rotation and location. Confirm that we're still good, which we are. We are good to go. We have the sway set up and linked up how we want. So it gives the weapon kind of that uh, perceived weight. So basically what you can do with this is, well, what I've done in my personal project is, actually I have the notepad right here. So you can see I'm taking in the weight of the rifle as well as the ergonomics with the weight of the rifle having a bigger influence over the ergonomics. So the heavier the firearm, the more lag there's going to be. So as, let's say you have a, like an AR-10, you know, roughly a 10 pound, or just say a 10 pound rifle all said and done. Well, when you turn left or right really quickly, you're going to have some high sway to it. So there's going to be, as if it's going to kind of give that simulation of hey, this is heavy, it's got a lot of weight, it's requiring a lot of effort to turn. But if we just strip off whatever attachments you want, that would influence, you know, your ergonomics can lighten up the weight. You Let's say we have a, I don't know, six and a half pound rifle. Well, that would lighten up a good bit. So when we turn, there's not going to be nearly as much sway or lag. Instead, it's going to keep it relatively tight and it's going to be a lot quicker. And I use this to modify our interpolation speed as well. So it increases our interpolation speed as we go through so that way even though we'll have you know a small amount of sway it also snaps back to center faster with the lighter that the rifle is so that's one of the ways that you can go through and modify this system to really kind of suit your gameplay and same thing goes with the interpolation for aiming i use the exact same thing the heavier the rifle the slower we aim the lower the ergonomics the slower we aim as well yeah. But I give the weight of the rifle the biggest influence over this because that's what's going to control it probably the most. So, anyhow, that's going to be all for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patreons as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos such as this one. So, same thing goes for my Discord that's also linked down below. I'll try to help you out in there if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.